Hello, today we are going to learn what the vector velocity is. We will talk about average speed, average velocity, instantaneous velocity, Cartesian and intrinsic components, and instantaneous speed. This morning, Amanda and Jay had a date to go to the basketball court together. In the end, it took them longer than expected. It took them an hour, and they covered five kilometers. But how fast did they go? The intuitive concept of velocity is the ratio between the space traveled and the time spent. But in the last class, we saw that there are two physical quantities that refer to the space traveled. One is the increment of s, that is the space traveled over the trajectory. In this case, it has been five kilometers. The other one is a vector magnitude, the displacement vector, which in this case equals four kilometers. Therefore, what would have been the velocity? Would it have been five kilometers per hour, four kilometers per hour? Would they have always had the same speed? We are going to solve all these doubts in today's class. It is very common to refer to velocity as the ratio between the space traveled on the trajectory, the increment of s divided by the time taken. However, in physics, this quantity is called average speed. It is a scalar and is measured in meters per second. In this case, the increase in s is five kilometers and the time taken is one hour. Therefore, the average speed is five kilometers per hour. In physics, the term velocity is reserved for a vector quantity. There are two types of velocity vectors, the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity, and both are measured in meters per second. The average velocity vector is evaluated at an incremental time interval of t, and it is equal to the displacement vector divided by the increment of t used, and therefore it is going to be a vector that carries the same direction and sense as the displacement vector. In our case, the displacement vector is 4i kilometers, and the increment of t has been one hour. Therefore, the average speed is 4i kilometers per hour. But the modulus of the average velocity does not always coincide with the average speed, only if the motion is rectilinear and without return. Only in that case, as we saw in the previous class, the increment of s coincides with the modulus of the displacement vector. If Jay and Amanda had gone in a straight line to the basketball hall, their average speed and velocity would have been four kilometers per hour. But would they always have been going four kilometers per hour? Well, the important thing is that they made it to the basketball court and that one of Jay's shots will help us to continue learning about speed. The other velocity vector that exists is the instantaneous velocity vector. This is evaluated at a specific instant t. It is a concept similar to the one we have seen of average velocity, but the time interval is infinitely small. That is, it is the limit when the increment of t tends to zero of the average velocity vector. This is the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. In the figure, we see the ball in two instants that we can suppose infinitely close. We have represented the displacement vector. The instantaneous velocity vector would be that displacement vector divided by the time increment of t, and its direction and sense would coincide with that of that displacement vector. Since the instantaneous velocity vector is the derivative of the position vector, to calculate its Cartesian components, we must derive with respect to time each of the Cartesian components of the position vector. If we call these components v, x, v, y, and v, z, these components are the projections of the velocity vector on each of the Cartesian axes. But here we see that the instantaneous velocity vector is always tangent to the trajectory. Therefore, it is much more convenient to express it by its intrinsic components. In this case, it is represented by a modulus and a vector t. This vector t is a unit vector, that is, of length unity and is always tangent to the trajectory at any point. As for the modulus, in physics it is called the instantaneous velocity modulus, it is called instantaneous speed, and as its name indicates, it depends on the instant of time in which we are. In fact, while Jay was training, Amanda made some calculations and presented us the value of the instantaneous speed during the walk they had to the basketball court. Initially, they were at rest and their velocity was zero. Then they started walking at a good pace. At the instant, at the 10 minute mark, for instance, the speed was seven kilometers per hour. Then, 
In the 20th minute and 30th minute, the speed was 6 km per hour. Then they went slower in the 40 minute mark at 5 km per hour. In the 50th minute, the speed was 3 km per hour. And finally, they arrived, they reached the pavilion and stopped. Therefore, the speed is back to zero. Well, now it's time for Amanda to remind us of the most important things we've seen in class. We have seen that the average speed is a scalar physical quantity that relates the path traveled over the trajectory increment of s and the time spent increased by t. Although people usually refer to this quantity as velocity, the term velocity in physics is reserved for a vector quantity. There are two types of velocity vectors, the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity. The average velocity is the displacement vector divided by the increment of t used. The instantaneous velocity is the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. The latter can be expressed by its Cartesian or intrinsic components. Finally, we have seen that the modulus of the instantaneous velocity is called instantaneous speed, and all these physical quantities are measured in the international system in meters per second. See you soon.